like I'm so thankful that they struggled. I'm so thankful that they struggled so much <laughs> so that I don't have to struggle. Would I survive as an immigrant? I literally would not survive as an immigrant. Oh, you think that I'm, I'm gonna be able to pick up and move to a foreign country where I don't know the language, where I don't have friends, where I'm gonna have to be in ESL if I move young enough, where I'm not even gonna like understand when people are making fun of me. You think I'm gonna survive that? Absolutely not. I'm not surviving that. And so I'm so thankful <laughs> that my parents endured those struggles so I don't have to. <laughs> The lighting is a little horrendous here. I can't really open my eyes, so let's move to the back seat. Ah! Oh my gosh. <laughs> Welcome to the back seat. We are back for another episode of Prukuki Pod. I am your host, Hannah Cat. And today we are gonna do we're gonna do something a little bit different because you guys. Got a little package from Musina. Ooh, okay, so I got these pants. They're from In Silence. And then I also got this top from Use. It's a little tank top action. Ooh, I got this little top from 145 Office. Last piece, I got a little braided tank top. I don't know if you guys can see the detail on this, but it's really cute and I like it. A lot so yeah i've just been into my my tops and then yeah the jeans hopefully they fit well because i literally have like two pairs of jeans that i actually wear and so i just like needed to expand a little bit so that's the haul thanks for joining me on that journey and then what else oh i actually wanted to start off the episode by giving a little praise report i don't know if you guys did this um if you are like familiar with like the church scene um usually we'll do praise reports after prayer requests and so like it's essentially like if your prayers have been answered like please go ahead and share so we can kind of like recount on the good things that happen and so praise report my sister and i argued a little bit yesterday because i had bad tone with her and i admit it she like asked a question and essentially i like shut it down really quickly and so she was like a little bit upset about it and so kind of like stormed off during our family dinner and then she came out and she said i didn't i feel like i felt like you could just kind of like shut down what i said without really like considering it and so um i would appreciate it if you could watch your tone and i was like oh my gosh well here's the little explanation she's like but still it's your tone and i was like you're right and so we did a really good job communicating and i'm really happy about it because you know what that means we are learning and then literally i turned to my dad and i was like look at us communicating and he was like wow that was really impressive um and so it was really cute because my mom has just she just came back from japan so that's why my sister and i went home to just like spend time because my sister and i will go home like once a week honestly but we always miss each other so this is the first time that we were able to like come on the same day and so it was so cute because we like had our well me and my dad and my mom had dinner and then my sister did not have dinner and then she ate later but we all four of us sat in my room at the end of the day as my mom was doing her haul and we were just talking and it was so nice to just like kind of be nostalgic like we were reflecting on how many amazing family trips we went on last year because last year was stacked we went to korea in may um we did saint bart's in december and then i guess like january is not technically last year but feels like last year we did aspen then and so we were just talking about like vibes were so good even when they weren't just like in korea it was a very chaotic trip like everything that could have gone wrong went wrong and more like literally things that you would not even expect or think about and so we all like were just like really struggling in korea but it ended up being such an impactful trip like such a needed trip and so we were recounting about that and then even like st bart's like we usually don't do like relaxing vacations it's usually like trips where you know we have an itinerary and like things to do and things to check off the list and things to eat and so st bart's it was just kind of like let's relax and chill and it was honestly amazing um and then aspen too like we went with one of my dad's 
well, I guess we're we're technically cousins through marriage. So if you guys listen to Kiwon's episode, Kiwon is my cousin who lives in Korea, dates in Korea, and also makes like Korean content. Uh, if you guys want to check her out, it's n a m dot n o m nam nam. Um, and so yeah, we went with their whole family except for Kiwon actually. Um, it was just her younger sister Jackie who was also on the podcast uh who talked about long distance relationships and interfaith couples and so um had just like an amazing time uh we just like it was the best snow that we've ever gotten on a ski trip wasn't too cold like we weren't miserable miserable we were just like a little bit miserable which is like that just comes with the territory of skiing and ski trips in general and so yeah it was just so fulfilling and it was really nice being able to just like talk to my parents about all this and how like I think my parents as they get older have become softer um and we kind of have this like understanding of each other now and so that brings me to our topic for today which is parental and societal expectations and parent adult child relationships and so what makes me qualified to talk about this? I have a parent. I have two parents and I am an adult child. And the transition between being like a teenager, um, like someone who they were my like legal guardians, right? This is that how it works? Like they're still your legal guardians? I don't understand how that works. But anyways, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, I think like the we got the whole like early stages on lock we got elementary middle school high school on lock literally the way that my parents like raised me and my sister was very much like substitute teacher vibes or like teacher vibes so what i mean by this is i think teachers have a responsibility to demand respect from their students very early on if you are a teacher and you don't garner the respect from your students from the top, like from the jump, you're going to have a very hard time earning that respect later on, right? That's when you get the rowdy kids, the kids who like maybe aren't that scared of you, like just like don't really give a shit. And so it makes it so that there's just, it's, it's a very tough life, right? But if you are the teacher who's a little bit terrifying at the beginning and then you soften up and you have already earned the respect of your students and then you're able to form like maybe a little bit more of an emotional personal relationship with them you're gonna have a fantastic time and so when it comes to my parents my mom elementary school terrifying that woman was so freaking scary and it wasn't in like her raising her voice or like okay like don't get me wrong like literally i'm a 90s kid did i get spanked once i got spanked once did my mom cry afterwards yes it was like a time when that was normal but my mom never did that she did that once um because i I was actually being like really freaking annoying but anyways what she did to discipline me was just give me the look you know what look i'm talking about Oof. like that's actually a look i would never wish upon my greatest enemies or maybe I would, but it's actually one of the most scary, terrifying looks because you know when like people are are so calm and yet so mad, it's one of those things. And so my, all my friends knew if I got the look, it's game over. Like I'm in trouble. We're heading home. Whatever the situation may, whatever the situation may be, like y'all know it's shut down like skepta is shut down and so my mom was very scary and then in middle school i started getting confused because right if you made me responsible in elementary school middle school i'm also responsible i had all my shit together i asked her for all the signatures and all the things early like i was good kid but then my mom started being like hannah you should like go hang out with your friends like you should go to the mall like oh someone's so and so is having a party like a birthday party like you should go and i was like what is going on like why does she chill out all of a sudden and i think it's because she felt like i was 
too responsible like i would only spend my time studying and all of that and so she was like let's make sure she's like social too like that is an important part of like growing up is making sure this girl knows how to make friends and has friends and so eventually like i like picked up on it and i was like oh you know what i can have friends like i can go out and be social and like not do homework all the time like of course i'll still get my homework done like that's a given but it doesn't have to be done like on a friday night when like you should be out and so they kind of like loosened up right and so that was the first transition and then the transition into adulthood that was a tough one and i'm not only speaking from my perspective but my parents as well i think kind of the first step in realizing that oh my parents are human and they don't know exactly what they're doing all the time was realizing that they're human and don't know what they're doing a hundred percent of the time like anybody i don't know about y'all but like i'm just kind of bsing my way through it like essay i'm adding so much fluff life same thing fluff you're just figuring it out and genuinely that's everybody and so with my parents too i became very like forgiving of the ways in which i felt like hurt and like they could have done a better job and all that right like if you are a child in the world you're going to be messed up somehow that is a given but i started to realize oh on the spectrum of trauma I'm at the bare minimum of things and I have vocalized to my parents like oh yeah these are you know some of the ways in which like I felt hurt during my childhood and like maybe I like wish differently for my childhood and these were not easy conversations to have it was very emotional like I have I have literal photos of like when we had these like breakthrough conversations and it's tissues upon tissues upon tissues because everyone was crying like literally mom dad me carol were all crying because it was just acknowledging like the pain that like we go through as humans and like maybe how we are partially responsible for inflicting that pain even if we didn't mean it right like my parents love me and i know that they love me so much and i love them so much But that can coexist with, oh, I know that you guys raised me the best you could, but I still feel pain in some ways. And I was still affected negatively in some ways. And it's not a blame game of like, oh, you are the cause of my trauma. Though, yes, sometimes that is justified. For me, it's more, oh, they really tried their best, but that doesn't take away from the pain that I felt. Like, I'm still very validating of that, right? And so we had these breakthrough conversations and I think it was like a huge step for my parents to recognize that like they might have been the cause of some of these things, but I don't need them to feel bad about it. Like, yes, they can take responsibility, but it's not meant to be like a guilt shame type of situation. Like never in my life would I ever blame my parents for the way that I am I guess because I need to also take responsibility for that and though they like played a factor in it they were trying their best I know that right the love that I feel for my friends the love that I feel for baby Stuart and Finley and Leo all the doggies like I know in my heart of hearts that I would never do something intentionally to harm them and so if this is your child If you are a sane human being, if you are not, you know, off the rails a little bit, I would hope that you would want the best for your child. And so I know in my heart, not even deep in my heart, it's like literally right here, like blaringly obvious how much my parents care for me and that it was not intentional. And so it's just a lot of like acceptance and acknowledgement on everybody's end. And so when it comes to the adult child and parent relationship i think that's the first step it's just like recognizing wow my parents are human maybe second step is having a conversation with them if they're open to it 
um we'll leave that as an optional and then the step after that the third step i think is the hardest which is actually living out that transition right because i think that there is very much a difference between acknowledging that we're going through this change and like actually going through the change and so i think that's where a lot of like struggle came from was just in applying this like known transition into our like daily living because though my parents can recognize that i am an adult now and that I'm going to be making decisions for myself and I might not be living the way that they expect me to live, right? Like, if we're being completely candid, during COVID, this is, COVID was two years after I graduated college. During COVID, my dad went, do you want to go into medicine? You can still become a doctor. Like, you can still do that. And I... I like looked at him and I was like, oh my God, should I do that? Because that whole like wanting to please your parents came back, right? My dad always speaks about this. You guys can correct me if you believe differently, but children inherently want to please their parents, right? A lot of times our parents are the first source of validation that we get in our lives. And so it only makes sense for them, for us to want to please them. And so in the same way, like my childness came out in that, oh dad wants me to go back to school at my big age of 24 maybe I should consider it and then I started to ask myself like why like what was the reason that I was like considering it yes I was feeling lost in my career but then also it was a lot of oh if my dad wants this for me then like I think he's right because my dad has been right his entire life right in everything that we do when we're children when we're teenagers it's like you look to your parents for guidance or at least I did and I'm very lucky and I feel very blessed to have been able to have parents who understand the education system and understand um you know just like things that maybe I took for granted as a child of someone whose parents speak english and like maybe not your like so typical first generation immigrant scenarios all that to say that i was still giving in to the parental expectations and the parental burden of like what i thought they wanted for me and i don't think that's wrong in any way if you're if you love medicine and you love healthcare and you decided to go to down that because it was planted maybe inceptioned into your brain by your parents like we need that we need doctors we're gonna lose too many doctors if that happens or if that stops happening but is it also important to really ask yourself if that's what you want yes because right at the end of the day it is your life and maybe this is a very like western way of thinking because i think that eastern thinking and western thinking are oftentimes in contrast with each other right when you think about eastern culture or at least me and my korean culture everything is for the family the oldest takes care of the youngest takes care of the younger and it's a very like communal society whereas in western culture it's very individualistic and so maybe this is a very westernized way of thinking but i did grow up here But in general, my parents sacrificed a lot to get to where we are, and I will never take that sacrifice for granted. Like, I'm so thankful that they struggled. I'm so thankful that they struggled so much (laughs) so that I don't have to struggle. Would I survive as an immigrant? I literally would not survive as an immigrant. Like, I think about it and like, oh, yeah, natural selection is coming for me. Oh, you think that I'm, I'm going to be able to pick up and move to a foreign country where I don't know the language, where I don't have friends, where I'm going to have to be in ESL if I move young enough, where I'm not even going to, like, understand when people are making fun of me? You think I'm going to survive that? Absolutely not. I'm not surviving that. And so I'm so thankful. <laughs> that my parents endured that those struggles so i don't have to (laughs) no but 
that wasn't my destiny because obviously I'm here as a second generation immigrant, not a first generation immigrant. But truly, 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 I'm so thankful that they were able to get a handle on the situation. I'm thankful that it was my grandparents who moved here and brought their kids over, aka my parents, at a young enough age for them to acclimate and understand the system and work the system because it has made it so that we're setting up the family for success. Like, even to an extent, and this is very candidly, I don't know if I'm going to be able to reach the financial security that my parents reached at my age, right? That is, I believe scientifically, scientifically, I believe that's in the statistics, but please, please, please correct me if I'm wrong because I'm a little nervous, scared that my source is TikTok. But everything is a bit more unstable than it was like when our parents were our age. Like people were be, were able to like buy homes, like put down that down payment. But like, can we? Maybe not. I look to them and I'm like so thankful for their sacrifice, but I guess I question for myself, like would the best way to honor them be to meet their expectations and do everything that they told me that I should do? Or is it to lead my life in the way that I want and the way that they've been able to like give me this freedom to do what I want because like they, because of their hard work? Like I'm not really sure what the answer is. But I guess if you like look at my daily living and my actions, I hope that you guys, I hope that I give the vibe that I'm like gratitude filled because I am so grateful to be able to pursue my creative endeavors with, without inhibition, feel the rain on your skin. I don't have to hesitate because... I'm so thankful and I'm so grateful and I hope that it is very clear and it comes across that way because once again, I would not survive as an immigrant. And so yeah, parental expectations. I personally have taken on this philosophy of I think personally the best way to honor my parents' risk-taking is by taking risks myself and because I believe that like nothing worth going for is like going to be easy and like this is no doc to people who are a bit more security focused or stability focused like I completely understand people who are like that and honestly I wish I was like that a little bit more sometimes but personally for me I love to take a risk. I love to weigh my options. I love to weigh the pros and cons and then be like, you know what? I know that this like has a little bit more cons, but no risk, no reward. Right, baby? Marshall Snake. I am a business girl at heart. No risk, no reward. Low risk, low reward. High risk, high reward. And so I think that I want to continue down this path of both being gratitude filled and then also honoring my parents by working hard and giving my all and another part of one of the breakthrough conversations I had with my parents was like as long as I'm happy they really don't care like what I'm doing And I'm, like, so thankful that, like, we're able to communicate in this way because I know that other families cannot. Like, it is hard enough to communicate in person, IRL, with people who speak the same freaking language as you. I cannot, I actually can't fathom trying to communicate, especially at my level of Korean, trying to communicate these deep emotional things with my my parents i think it would be honestly like too hard to the point where like would i give up trying at a certain point maybe and that's so freaking sad to not be able to like reach the emotional depth that like you wish you could because of a language barrier like if that is you i really feel for you and i really sympathize And I hope that, like, at the very least, 
you're able to communicate at a base level like the love that you share for your parents and hopefully you have other like people in your life a significant other some friends other family members who you're able to like talk to about like the deep things that you would want to like talk to your parents about but I think like when it comes to the parental expectation and adult child relationship stuff like it goes both ways like I have to understand that my parents have certain expectations of me and in a way like I'm choosing to not meet those and then and I have to accept it like I have to be okay with it because I don't want to live my life like feeling guilty that like I never did what my parents wanted me to right like again going back to like children want to please their parents like of course I want my parents to be proud of me like oh my gosh um yesterday I almost started crying I've been so emotional guys I've just been crying every single day but I almost started crying because I woke up really early like woke up at 6 50 um and like my dad knows that your girl sleep in like he knows I'm sleeping till 9 10 a.m and so I woke up at 6 50 and then I ran into him downstairs and he was like what are you doing up I was like oh I'm gonna go for a run he was like oh okay where and I was like oh I'll probably run like along the beach um like start in Torrance Beach and then go like maybe towards Manhattan he's like oh how much are you running and I was like I have to do 10 today and he I came back and he was like oh okay bye I came back and he was like I'm so proud of you like give me a big hug and I was like what the heck like it feels so good to make your parents proud and I guess like in ways like I feel like I haven't done that in a long time oh right because I think that at least for me and maybe this is come coming from like a very Asian perspective But the two things that, like, my parents I know get proud of is career slash academics and then, like, physical health. And so, like, there was kind of no reason that my dad would be proud of me physical health-wise other than, like, me running. Because running is so challenging, right? So when he heard that I was running 10 miles, and he knows I hate running. Like, I was not a cardio girl growing up. Like, I've never been a cardio girl. And so when he heard that I did that, he was like, yes, that is the key to life. Like, you have to do hard things in order to train the... And almost, like, reset the dopamine levels in your brain. And I was like, yes, I completely agree. Like, I understand the science behind it. And, like, we are on the same page with that. But when it comes to career, like, that's a that's a sore spot. Because me pursuing podcasting, me pursuing being a content creator, like, that's not stable. That's not the life that my dad imagined for me. Like, my dad truly was like, oh, this girl's going to become a surgeon. Like, I hope you guys know up here there's some thought we got some things up here there's some stuff up here i am a smart person i am a smart girly pop and so i guess in ways like i can see from my dad's point of view where he could feel like i'm not reaching my potential right i think that that is a fear that a lot of people have is like the fear that they aren't like meeting their potential and so I can I completely sympathize with my dad I'm not too sure I empathize yet maybe that comes with like more age but in general like I get it like I know that he wants me to be proud of my career and then he also wants to be proud of my career and in general like I'm I'm right there with him I want to be like proud of my career I want to be successful and like do good work and be a good person and like make a difference right like I hope that you guys who are listening to this podcast right now it's not just a weekly thing like we're gonna throw it on in the background like yes it is that because like we're all busy human beings and I am completely 
I'm the only time I listen to podcasts is like when I'm driving or like when I'm at the gym sometimes when I'm trying to reset my dopamine levels and so I'm not expecting you to like invest your lives into this but I hope that this podcast makes you feel less alone and is an outlet for you because I know that amongst my friends like yes we do talk about these things but am I talking about the parental expectations and burdens of being an immigrant child at every single dinner or lunch that I go to with my friends no but I want this to be a space for you guys to come back to in order to talk about the things that you are thinking up here but aren't vocalizing out here we are missing this community element right everyone's talking about how oh gen z oh millennials like everyone's on their phone ipad babies nobody knows how to connect or have a conversation anymore like i want to change that through this podcast through this community right here because i know y'all are my people like i know that you guys struggle with the same things that i do but maybe don't have the community to talk about it with and so i hope that this podcast is that for you and that you're able to walk away every single week being like oh I like took something away from that and at the very least like I feel connected to I feel connected with all that to say going back to parental societal expectations and adult child and parent relationships oh I think we were at step three huh okay so three was the actual transition I think four is really the gratitude piece And this is exactly what happened in, like, um, the conversation between my sister, my mom, and my dad was we were able to kind of just sit down as a family and, like, be so thankful that, like, we went through all that hard stuff. Like, I, I hope you guys know that, like, those few breakthrough conversations where I addressed the childhood trauma, my parents addressed the childhood trauma that I could have had, and there was, like, a lot of, like, acceptance and taking responsibility and all of that like pre all those conversations I thought I had a good relationship with my parents I thought that we were this close deep tight-knit family like literally picture perfect and I thought that I could go to my parents for everything but now now that we're post breakthrough conversation I recognize how shallow my relationship was that with them was. Like, we had to go through literally the screaming matches, the crying matches, the, like, storming upstairs in order to get to where we are now. Because we've all, like, learned and understood and grown from all those, like, hard times. And I hope that if you are able to communicate with your parents that you kind of like push through all of the all the struggle and the turmoil and if you aren't i hope that you have a community outside of your family where you can like talk about this with right because i personally can't relate to this kind of transition with parents who don't speak the same language as me but I know that is the case for a lot of people and so I hope that you would able you are able to find a community to talk to this about because I personally am like a verbal processor I just like need to talk through things and talk out things and so whether that be a therapist with professional experience or somebody who doesn't have any professional experience at all but will just listen to you yap like reach out to your community give yourself and the people involved grace because this is everyone's first time being alive and being at the life stage that they're at and so it is the first time my parents are having to parent adult children And so I have to be forgiving of that. They're not perfect. They're not what I used to think that they were. I used to think my parents knew freaking everything. No. They're doing the best that they can with the resources and the information that they are given. Just like us. And so we're all BSing our way through. Please be forgiving to your parents. And I hope that you would be open to having these conversations. Because personally for me, along the way, 
in being open, I've like learned to be a little bit more patient with my parents to kind of hear them out a bit more, still respect them, but also have the confidence and have built up the communication to speak my truth. It's kind of crazy, y'all. Um, me and my family were like, we're kind of like a white family the way that we talk. <laughs> oh, how nice it is to not have any language barriers, huh? Other than that, you guys, I hope you have a blessed week. You know, for a really long time, I thought that the word, ble- I was really confused about the word blessed because in so many praise songs, it would be blessed. Blessed be the name of the Lord, right? But I think it's just like the tune of the song. So they just change it to blessed. So I think that's very funny. Um, Okay, I think that's it for this week. Follow us on all the socials. Only say nice things in the reviews if you have nice things to say. Oh, and then shout out to a good used book they are right across from la Vetta on glendale boulevard in silver lake they are having an event on may 10th the owner chris said it'll be like a little like book fair they're gonna have tattoos and drinks and like little food bites and so i think i'll be going i think i'll be attending and so if you guys want to come through do it Yeah, Chris was such a sweetie. I, like, listened to him talk about books for so long, and I'm like, wow, you are so well-read, and, like, I aspire to be like you. Um, And then, other than that, shout-out to Allie and Mike. Y'all got married. Oh, my gosh. And then I, guess what I learned? This time I want you, 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 like it's magnetic, you, 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 you. Super mignon, you, you, you. Okay. Okay. I can't thank you. Actually, bye.